What's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you all are having a great start to your Saturday morning so far. We're going to continue to talk about what's going to happen with Elsa um, throughout the next three days, including today. So Saturday, Sunday, and 4th uh, of July. I'm going to do two videos a day just to try to keep you all up to date with what's going on with Elsa. What is it going to do? Because uh, this is going to be a hot topic over the next uh, several days, probably all the way until about mid to late ne next week. So we're going to continue to talk about it figure out what's going to go on but right now it's currently still a low end hurricane i'm talking low end like the lowest it can go a 75 mile per hour storm due to the latest update uh, at 8 a.m to the national hurricane center it's a 75 mile per hour hurricane elsa you pretty much can probably see where it's at on the screen it's right here it's just south of hispaniola low pressure is just south of hispaniola but let me tell you guys it is really struggling before we get deep into this video, if you guys have not subscribed, definitely sub uh, consider subscribing. I upload content every day and uh, try to keep you all guys up to date, even when the weather's kind of uh, boring, not a lot going on. So thank you all for the amazing support. I've had a lot of support over the last uh, few weeks. So thank you all. It's much appreciated. Definitely like the video if you like it and uh, give me some feedback. So much appreciated. But let's get back to this. So like I said, this is technically still Hurricane Elsa, um, but let me tell you, it... it you know, I mentioned last night in the video that it probably wasn't going to strengthen much. It probably was going to either sustain or maybe weaken a tad bit. And uh, it's pretty much done that. It's and, and as far as weakening, I think on the 11 a.m. update, so by the time some of you watch this, this might be downgraded. It probably will be downgraded to a tropical storm, probably a 65, 70 mile per hour tropical storm. You know, So it'll be tropical storm Elsa instead of hurricane Elsa. But it's struggling. So right now, it's in the fork in, fork in the road. Before we get deep into this, I will show you the update. Like, like I said, 75 mile per hour storm, the 8 a.m. update, and uh, that's pretty much what we got going on with that. Um, so right now, the low level circulation is still outrunning the mid level circulation. Um, so right now, it's still moving at 31 miles per hour. Where I was wrong at, personally, is this thing was supposed to slow down at least a little bit overnight, but it's not, and it's weakened, so it's getting influenced more by the steering currents and the subtropical ridge on top of it right up here. So it's weakening, and it's still weakening because it won't slow down. Elsa it just, just wants to haul butt across the, uh, the Eastern Caribbean. I will mention this is a hostile environment right here especially this time of the year, mainly this time of the year. A lot of times you are dealing with a lot of shear and a very hostile environment. It doesn't help. Like I said, the low-level circulation is outrunning its convection. So, yes, there is a convective explosion right here around the low-level circulation, but it's just not enough right now. There's nothing uh, protecting this low-level circulation at all, and it's outrunning basically its barrier it's a convection that really keeps um, the low-level circulation healthy. It keeps it um, protected, if you will, and it just keeps out running. And that's what's going on right now. Like right now, low pressure shear, but check out the convection that's it's starting to die down down here and refire up, up kind of around the low-level uh, circulation. But I will show you this. Check this out. This is where the low pressure is. And it, it, it's very, you can see it clear as day, you know, with the L just south of Hispaniola. But you compare this with, make sure I click the right thing with this. And you would think that the center of the storm is kind of right here. But this kind of blow up in convection is kind of telling us, hey, yeah, this is definitely where the center of the low level um, circulation is. So basically because of this is happening, it's displaced. It's not vertically stacked. Vertically stacked as the low-level circulation isn't directly under, if you will, the mid-level circulation. So it's getting exposed to shear. Therefore, you're going to get a weakening storm. And it's also in the fork of fork in the road, if you will. So it's getting influenced by the easternly trade winds, which it will allow it to move west, and the ridge up top, which would allow it to move more northwest. And it's it's definitely taking more that route instead. But um, right now, the cold of uncertainty kind of want to break down what it's going, what's going on with it right now, and you know, so but right now, cold of uncertainty still. Hurricane warnings up for the south end of Hispaniola. Hurricane warning still the entire island of Jamaica, and you still got hurricane um, watches for a basically the entire eastern half of Cuba for the coastal areas. 
Check out the Cone of Uncertainty by 2 a.m. It's um, basically around the Florida Keys. It's thinking it's going to be a tropical storm by 2 a.m. Wednesday. It might be making landfall on the western shores of Florida in any given location as a tropical storm. But now you have the Cone of Uncertainty reaching all the way to southern areas of Virginia. I really think it's increasingly likely that Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina are going to be impacted by this tropical system somehow. Will it be just rain? Will it be rain and gusty winds? Can it move west enough where there's actually a tornado threat due to it hitting the uh, more favorable quadrant of the storm that has more severe weather? We don't know all them details yet. Once it gets into this range up here into next week, we have no idea what it's going to do. And I'll show you why here in a second because the models are still everywhere, really are. But um, let's get to this. Uh, as far as um, intensifications, the latest 06Z models are keeping this thing as a tropical storm. It's going to weaken it into a tropical storm. And only a few models still have it getting to a hurricane, back to hurricane status. And that's really because of land interaction, uh, big time. You can check out the models. Look how most of the models have it riding over a Cuba for a good at least half day to a day. Let me tell you, there is some 10,000 foot mountaintops over Cuba, I believe. Very high mountaintops over Cuba, I believe. Uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, my bad. But there's some pretty high, uh, high mountaintops over Cuba. It's one thing if Cuba was just one flat island. There was no mountains. It's another thing when you got high mountaintops. They completely shred tropical systems. And Cuba, if Cuba wasn't sitting right here, then we wouldn't be talking about this thing really weakening to a tropical storm and staying a tropical storm. But it is, and it's not going to approach Cuba for more of a south to north. It's going to approach, approach it more just gliding over the island for a long period of time. Therefore, it's probably going to shred the uh, the the Elsa even more, even if it maybe strengthens a little bit more over the next uh, half day or so. But here's the latest uh, GFS. It's hard for me to take any of the models serious right now. Really, we got to look at real-time data and uh, really look at it in six-hour intervals almost. You know, latest GFS keeps it as a tropical storm. Um, maybe nicks the southwest side of uh, Hispaniola. It still has it kind of fitting between uh, Cuba and Jamaica, but it's still a tropical storm. And it might have a chance to strengthen maybe just south of Cuba. It depends on how quick it moves over Cuba. Then it glides over Cuba and it rips it apart. It gets back into the eastern Gulf of Mexico briefly. Probably strengthens back into a tropical storm if it doesn't weaken all the way into a depression. And uh, makes landfall, well, uh, it actually stays over the Gulf of Mexico. It it actually jolts back west. I, I should have looked at that a little further. It actually makes landfall more in the armpit of um, Florida as a pretty weak tropical storm. And uh, then affects areas of Georgia and the Carolinas with some tropical moisture. Not very impactful. The European, which a lot of people aren't really mentioning a lot this morning, was very interesting. Um, it's actually came in a little more aggressive and a good bit further west. Um, it does kind of what the GFS does in the short term, but in the long term, um, it gets it off Cuba, gets it in the far western areas of the Florida Keys, strengthens it, and it's it's kind of like what the GFS is. It kind of it kind of meanders and moves almost due north, uh, basically Tuesday into Wednesday. By Wednesday morning, it's making landfall in the kind of the armpit of Florida again as a tropical storm. And by Wednesday evening into overnight Wednesday into Thursday, it's moving and kind of gliding up the coast of Georgia and South Carolina as a tropical storm. It might strengthen. Um, you see that L, that 999 millibar low? Um, that's getting close close back to hurricane status on the eastern, uh, the eastern sides of uh, South Carolina and North Carolina. So an interesting scenario. Um, I want to show you the HWRF model because it's very interesting too, and it's actually ticked really far east. But it's interesting kind of in the long run what it does. So here it comes. It has it has Elsa sh strengthening somewhat and nicking kind of parts of the, uh, basically the southwest parts of Hispaniola. Um, in between Hispaniola, Jamaica, and Cuba, it has it strengthening into a hurricane again if it weakens to a tropical storm which it probably will and then it makes landfall 
on the far southeast uh, areas of Cuba, glides over Cuba, weakens substantially, and uh, it might just be a sloppy tropical storm depression at this point, gets back into the Florida Keys by overnight Monday into Tuesday, and uh, makes landfall basically on the far southern areas of South Florida, as uh, it looks like it intensifies again as basically a tropical storm down there kind of in the swamp of Florida and uh, glides over Florida, weakens obviously, but then it gets back over waters into uh, basically the the north uh, northeast area coast of uh, Florida, gets back over waters, um, begins to strengthen again into the kind of the uh, cuff, if you will, of the southeast coast. Uh, off the coast of um, Georgia and South Carolina, starts to strengthen again, and uh, looks like it's starting to near hurricane status, and this is as far out as it is go, and this is for Thursday morning, and it's starting to curve back northeast, but at the same time, it's lashing coastal areas of maybe South Carolina and North Carolina as a hurricane, and it might end up nicking the Outer Banks. This is an interesting scenario, and this is what Climo says, climatology. Um, basically, what I'm saying is this is what trop what the HWRF model is showing is what a lot of tropical storms, a lot of tropical systems do this time of the year. They tend to form down here, and if they do, you do get that rare event where they do form, which Elsa has. They tend to do this a lot. So this is a very realistic scenario now. Um, so I think even if either way, if this storm tracks west, if it tracks east, I think Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas, maybe even Virginia, really need to watch out for the storm. Now I'll show you what I mean by the fork in the road right now. Right now it's just south of Hispaniola, and I've been mentioning in the last few videos that once it got south of Hispaniola, there was going to be a big time pivotal point for the storm as far as where it was going to go. If it was going to be a weakening storm or a weaker storm, it was probably going to start being pushed a little bit further northwest. If it was a stronger storm, I think it was going to be influenced more and get pulled away from the, the gripping currents of the, the uh, subtropical ridge and push and get affected by the easter trade winds and probably move more west. But it's a weakening or weaker storm right now. It's probably going to be downgraded to a tropical storm at 11 a.m. update. And it's being influenced more, moving too fast, by the currents of the subtropical ridge. It's also, you know, I'll note, because it's moving so fast, it's moving in time, this subtropical ridge was going to weaken, but it's been moving so fast that it's kind of entered a stage of the game where the subtropical ridge is still firmly intact. If this thing would have kind of slowed down, subtropical ridge would have kind of weakened uh, in the present time, and it wouldn't be so much influenced by it, but it is, if that makes any sense. So basically, if this thing would have slowed down, it would have got to this point, this point to where it is right now, um, a little bit later in the game, meaning that the subtropical ridge would have probably been a little bit more weaker, meaning it would have been influenced more by the eastern trade winds and moved a little bit further west. Just a theory there. Um, but it's getting pulled a little bit by that southeast current, meaning it's moving a little bit more northwest, meaning it's going to get pulled probably more into Cuba in the next day or so. So um, we'll see what happens. This is very interesting. Um because models are still kind of west, but then they have a sharp north to northeast turn. So I'm very interested to see what's going to happen. Like I said, Shear, basically Elsa's dealing with all kind of meteorological problems right now and elements. But, uh, you know, shear is going to be an issue, especially if the low level circulation continues to outrun its convection, if you will. It needs to be protected. And it's like it doesn't want to be protected. It wants to be exposed to shear and get shredded apart. But we'll see what happens. It's going to be a very interesting day. Uh, today and tomorrow are going to be very, very pivotal to the future of ELSA as far as Southeast Impact. So that's all I got. That's the update. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll have you all another eight update later this evening once we get through the lunchtime and evening models. Thank you all for tuning in. Y'all have a blessed start to your 4th of July weekend.